Thomas Bales and I'm Sales Solutions Engineer with Fast Torque. Today we're going to be talking about the Auto Torque Hydraulic Chain Pipe Wrench. What you'll see when you open up your Auto Torque Chain Pipe Wrench is you'll have your power tongue, your reaction tongue, you'll have your extra chain depending on the size pipe you're going to be making or breaking. You'll have two reaction bars, and you'll also have your cylinder and two cotter pins. So once you unpack your auto torque chain pipe wrench, you will need some extra tools that are not included. One is your crescent wrench. Two is depending on your chain size and pipe model that you go with, you're going to need two different wrenches. I'm going to identify each piece of the tool for you. This is the extra chain link. How we determine a chain link is from each one of these holes is a link. So this from here to here is one link. Here we have one, two, three, four links. You'll have your two reaction bars. You'll notice that they're different diameters. You'll have your cylinder. You'll have your pipe tong. This is going to be your power arm, and this black one will be your reaction arm. Now let's talk about the right way and the wrong way of setting this up. One thing you definitely need to take notice of is this chain and the way it lies inside of this pipe tong. Well, as you can see, this one lies perfectly inside the tong. Now let's look at the wrong way. This way, it's the wrong way. It's not flat with the tong. So if this is what you have, move it to this side. It should lie flat inside this hallway. We're going to set this particular one up for makeup. Now that I got it set on here, what you're going to do is you're going to latch the chain around and you're going to use this bar to give the chain the release. Now you'll tighten your tensioning nut. And as you notice, this arm is going to be moving up. You want to put a final little bump on that to make sure it's secure in place. All right, now we're going to set up the power arm. This is really important on how you set this arm up. Start off with the same process that you did with the reaction arm. Now I'm going to tighten the nut on the back side just as I did up here. For all of you that have used hand pipe wrenches, the same concept is here. When you go to push power on your arm, you want it to grip. But when you come back, you want it to slide on the pipe. So that's how you know how to adjust your chain pipe wrench. You don't want it too tight where it won't let you slide back. And you want it tight enough that it will grip when it's going forward. 
Now that we have this arm on, we're going to go ahead and put our cylinder on. Now that it's time to put your cylinder on, we need to select our reaction arm. How you do this is you put it up to the hole. If it fits, you have the right one. If you notice, your bigger reaction is on the bottom and the smaller one is at the top. Another key note to know is when you set this up, this part of the reaction is ne never supposed to be up, always down. We're going to start with this reaction arm and put our cylinder on. Now that we've installed our reaction arm, we're going to put our lock nut on and put our cotter pin. Now we'll grab our other reaction bar, nut, and cotter pin. Tilt the cylinder forward. You'll have to adjust depending on where your wrench is sitting. For mine, I'll need to move backwards, this one forward, power arm reaction bar. This one is going to be a tight fit, so when you get it in there, you'll have to get it, you have to tap it. Now that we got a tight fit on there, we'll put our lock nut and our cotter pin on. Now the power unit that I've chosen to use is a 603A. It's part of our 600 series power units. This particular one is a 3000 PSI unit. We have a 6000 PSI unit, 606A, a 10,000 PSI unit, a 610A. We're going to go ahead and hook up our hydraulics, but it's important to note that this cylinder is rated for 3000, 6000 PSI, also can run off a great hydraulic. Now that we've hooked our hydraulic lines with our quick disconnects, and we make sure that we fasten our reaction arm down, and we make sure that our power arm is just tight enough. Alright, now let's go ahead and make sure our area is cleaned up before we I want to make sure that there's nothing that could be under here, make sure that everything's clean. There's a few pinch points on this tool, so if you're going to be holding on to it, the only place you want to hold on is on the cylinder itself, back behind the reaction block. Never have any hands inside the working area. Let's go ahead and run this baby. going forward, gripping, and when it comes back, it's riding along that pipe to get another grip. One important aspect of the pipe wrench is making sure you have the right tension on your tension nut. And what I'm going to illustrate here is I'm going to make the cylinder go out, and when it comes back, you're going to notice that it will slide along this pipe. It will not move. If it grips on the way back, you have your tension nut too tight. If when going forward it slips, you have the tension nut too loose. The pinch points are here, here, underneath the chain, 
in between the chain on this housing, up above where the arm moves, here, here. Action. Now that I've shown you how the pipe wrench works, it's important to talk about the breakout. I've shown you how to make it up. In order to use this in a breakout form, what you'll do is you'll change this reaction arm to this side, and you'll flip your pin around. You'll change this arm to this side and flip your pin around. And you'll be set up to do your breakout. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions about this product or any of the Fast Torque product, give us a call or check us out online.